This week on The Grind, Bill and Tim continue their hunt in Leeds, North Dakota with great friend Rick Darling. After a successful first day with lots of mallards and pintails willing to work, the guys are excited for two more days on their first stateside hunt of the season. Bill also gets a big surprise when a duck shoot on the last day turns into a bit of a snow goose shoot with a few big groups willing to do it right. Waterfowl TV is brought to you by Dakota Decoy, premium gunning decoys for demanding hunters. Lucky Duck, masters of deception. Kent Cartridge, quality matters and performance counts. Mud Buddy, the king of mud motors. Excel, the boat to own. Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy, the most accessible online retriever training program. Yoder Smokers, handcrafted in the heartland. Rig'em Right Waterfowl, the industry leader in specialty waterfowl products. On X Hunt, know where you stand. Benelli, simply perfect. Cowboys Wild Game Washer, as clean as you can get them. Sound Gear, the leader in custom hearing protection. And these fine sponsors, Where are we going to do the blinds, Rick? I'll, do, I'll go to work on the blinds. Out here in the oats or up in here? It's just kind of side shooting as they come by. They should swing rightly. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll be blind boy. So our day two hunt, uh, when we come here, Rick knows we love water. Uh, Tim really likes it, pothole hunting. That's Tim's deal. I'm a, I'm a big water guy, but Tim likes these potholes. So Rick always tries to find water for us. And he worked hard yesterday afternoon trying to find water. Because of the drought, uh, the birds are more centralized and, and in big globs on the water. Um, he's having such good luck field hunting, he didn't want to take the chance that he might shoot up a roost. So uh, we all talked and we agreed. And uh, we got probably, we're probably about a mile from one of the smaller roosts. Um, I watched them this morning. To me, it looked like they were hitting water to water. So I don't think it was the main roost, but they were definitely roosting, day roosting there. I'd, pee, I'd fill in like on that edge, right? Back to that stake. So I think today we're just gonna run the new XHDIs and keep it simple. Four spinners. Got a Nice duck decoy spread. Let's see how that works today. A few less spinners out and see if we can get these birds to really center up. Well, we're on our second day here with good friend Rick Darling and North Country Guide Service. And the worst thing happened yesterday. We had a little bunch of snows work us. So we got out here this morning and pulled the door open. What did we see, Tim? Snow geese. Decoys. decoys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, we got a duck feed again this morning. Uh, there are some snows moving into the area. And it, we, we almost got into a little bunch yesterday. So I saw Rick cleaning snow goose decoys in his shed yesterday. I knew we were in for a few snow decoys this morning. But uh, hopefully good duck feed. Got a little wind this morning. Nice wind. 
We got a little camaraderie this morning. We were about an hour and a half early. An hour and a half early. <laughs> he buttered us up with some of Jana's cookies though, so it was all okay. Yes. <laughs> get set up here. We got about uh, 20 minutes till shooting time, get the trucks out of here. Uh, day two, North Dakota. Pretty morning, yeah. moon and sun on the other side. <laughs> Probably about a half hour after shoot, Mike, we get oh, first two birds come in. Shot. Got one of them. <laughs> Bill's got a bloody hand. <laughs> It's a good sign to start the day. Dog guy's always bloody. Have you noticed that? What's that? The dog guy's always bloody. Yeah. <laughs> good shooting, boys. That was awesome. Take him, take him, take him. Were you going to call that shot? Never seen him. Oh, I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> I didn't see those. You wanted them to be I, working. I, I, the I still haven't shot because I couldn't shoot over them. <laughs> Boys. A couple great mallards in there. Bunch of pintails and a few mallards. <laughs> back at us. Nope. You can only shoot one pintail a guy, so we're, that's a big flock of pintails and two drake mallards in there. So we're trying to be super careful. Come back, they want back in here. Bill, that was a hell of a hunt, huh? Yeah.
great hunt. Hank hasn't had enough. He's walking around with a duck <laughs> in his mouth. We had good flocks of ducks coming just continuously for about an hour, huh? Yeah. We're kind of, we're in a oat field here and there's the roost is probably oh, a mile over. Mm -hmm. So the early birds were coming off the roost to feed. And then a little later, the, wherever the birds had been feeding, they were coming back trying to get to the water, and we were short stopping them a little bit. They yep. messed them up a little bit. Rick had us in a good spot. Yeah, well, he should have. He got us here early enough this morning. <laughs> had an hour and a half to talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a great day here in North Dakota, though. Yeah. Get picked up and get back for breakfast. Make some duck fajitas. Yeah. Let's do it. Second, end of our second day hunt here in North Dakota with Rick Darling and yesterday in the field uh, when we picked up I remembered almost everything. I left Hank's little portable water bowl behind and I asked Rick this morning uh, if he cared if we went in the field to get it and he said heck no. So great big huge field. We did have some bales we kind of could mark but uh, Onyx brought us right to my dog bowl and there it is. Made my whole day, actually my whole week. I've had this thing for a long time. Thank you, Onyx. As the boys clean up some birds for tonight's dinner, Bill takes advantage of being in close proximity to Delta Waterfowl's headquarters and sits down with Matt to discuss how hen houses have increased hatch success and put more birds in the sky for the fall migration. So Matt, when I think of Delta, I think of two things. I think of predator management and hen houses. Uh, so what is a hen house and, and do ducks need hen houses? A hen house is a type of nest structure. It's a mallard nest structure. It's basically a horizontal cylinder. It's made out of welded wire fencing, some flax straw or other kind of uh, grass hay. Yeah, we put some nest material in there. It's placed over a wetland um, on a post where you know predators can't reach it. Um, ducks don't necessarily need a hen house, but when they nest in a hen house, they're much more likely to hatch their nest. And so ducks being, being smart critters that they are, when they're successful nesting in a location, they keep trying that type of location. And so they're, they're very productive. Once a hen's used in the hen house, what's the likelihood of the eggs hatching? That varies. But we've been doing research since the early 90s. Pretty consistently, nest success in hen houses is over 60%. Um, in some areas, it might be as high as 90%. Uh, when you compare that to a, a, a hen that nests in natural nesting cover, that also varies, but in the areas that we target, usually that nest success on the ground is less than 15%. Um, from a duck production perspective, we believe that 15% is the, is the nest success level needed just to sustain the population. For guys that are putting hen houses on private, their private sloughs, what kind of maintenance should they do to a hen house? Is it an annual thing they should go in and fix the, the house up? or? How, how do they handle that? Absolutely. As with any nest structure, really, uh, maintenance should be an annual thing. Um, we, tend, we send our contractors out to maintain all of our nest structures each year. Uh, generally, that's in February, March, just before the hens return from the, from the wintering grounds. They go out, touch up the exterior of those hen houses, and place some new, fresh nest material in there. There's been some evidence in other nest structure studies that, that, uh, that you know, a, a nest structure that has old nest remains in there is less likely to be used than one that's clean and fresh. So we want to make sure they have excellent nest material in there every single nesting season and retain that, that high use and that high pro productivity. For the guy that wants to, that has private sleuths, how does, how does he go about putting a hen house up? Can they contact you guys? Do you guys steer them in the right direction or how do you handle that? Well, we don't have hen houses for sale, but we do have directions on how to build, build hen houses on our website at www.deltawaterfowl.org and uh, it, it, it isn't you know a, a super difficult process but it does take a little bit of a little bit of know-how know but um, you know most guys that know somebody that can can build one for them. It's 
See how much falls out? Yes. Well, you had it. <laughs> Put the blinds right here in these tumbleweeds. Yeah, right where the tires are, and then come with the next one this way. Okay. All right, give me a, give me a ring base. Another hand, I can carry those. The plan is we're gonna get, put four of the XHDIs right in the hole. Um, and then we're also gonna put our rotary, that blocker, right in this kind of upwind corner um, with two uh, junior, lucky juniors on it. We'll just see how the birds react to both those motion areas in the spread. Um, the nice thing with that flocker is we can control the uh, flocker unit and the birds with the remote. Uh, so if we need to shut everything off, we can. But some days, that flocker and that rotary machine in the field with spinners on it, it's just a different look um, that ducks haven't seen um, a lot of. And we've had great success with that, attracting ducks um, in a big field spread like this. Oh, hey, look at that. Looky, looky. Set up here today on a, another oat field, and we got out the trail this morning, and I, when Rick pulled the doors open, there happened to be a few more snow goose decoys in there. He saw some snows here, so. Somehow he snuck probably three, four dozen. At least. Yeah, snow decoys in there. <laughs> so it's big duck feed, and they were mixed in with snows, so uh, maybe we'll choose a few snows this morning too, but. Last day, and Tim gets to stay and hunt for three more days. Yep, have some buddies coming up and have a little fun hunt for three days. I always enjoy that every year. Get him. Hank. Good boy. Do it, Rick. <laughs> Hank. Rick held out on us. We got a duck shoot that's turned into a little bit of a snow shoot. So, uh, lots of snow geese. And so there's been evidently some migration in here. Uh, we haven't seen any ducks yet, but we've got, had two little bunches of snows in. I'm a happy camper, Rick's a happy camper. We're set up for a duck hunt today. We got spinners going, and we got the new XHDIs with our, our uh, dark side up, white side down technology. And that was a perfect example. We had a bunch of snows come in. We could turn the spinners off. The dark side of the wings were up, and those those snows finished right over the top of the spinners. They weren't affected by them at all because those wings, the dark side of those wings, were up versus the white side sometimes finishing up. So we can control the, the wings and what's showing is perfect. Those geese finish right over the top, which is exactly why we have that product. I think I might help you, but hey.
Oh, that's a pretty blue there, boy. Wow. That's a beauty. Banded too, ain't it? We get adults in here, don't we, Rick? We don't mess around juvies. We mess around the juvies. <laughs> more for that than the duck. Hey. <laughs> I was, I was shooting like this. I had nothing. Nice boy, I had a nice bead on this one. There's one right here. Hank! <laughs> hey guys, I'm Barton Ramsey from Cornerstone Gundog Academy, and today I want to talk about what you should do when you first bring home your new puppy. Everyone's going to be excited, family, friends, you're going to be excited, you're in for a really fun journey. First thing you need to do is make sure that you have a proper crate and you begin the crate training process right when you get home. I like to teach my dogs that their crate is a den, it's a safe place for them to be, it's comfortable. I do this by feeding them in there, making sure it is comfortable, it's in a climate controlled area where the dog is comfortable, and always making sure that I take the dog outside to relieve himself in the grass before I put him in the crate and as soon as I take him out of the crate. I'm gonna use the crate to teach the dog structure, I'm gonna use the crate to teach the dog how to turn off all the excitement going on, how to get rest, and I'm gonna use the crate to teach the dog how to go potty outside and not in my house. The second thing you need to do is socialize. I think a lot of people get really excited about teaching their puppy tricks, and that's fun. Sit, place, peel, recall. Puppies love to learn. They love to learn for food, and we focus on that a lot inside Cornerstone. However, this age is the only opportunity you're gonna have to properly socialize your dog. So you're gonna want that dog to meet as many people, experience as many places, sights, sounds, as you can once the vaccinations are on board and once your dog can do so by having positive experiences. You wanna meet people and it be positive. You wanna go places and it be positive. You want everything to teach that dog the world is a really, really fun place. That's going to lead to a dog who is confident and bold and is much easier to train than a dog who's nervous and skeptical. So try that, check out Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy to know where to start, what to do next, and how to solve problems when training your retriever. Now, back to the grind. Coming and hunting with Rick and his son Blake is one of my favorite trips of the year. We always have a great time together. Um, you know, the last three days were really good hunting. Uh, Rick had us on birds like he always does. Um, it just was a lot of fun. And again, it's my favorite. My favorite time of the year is mid-October in North Dakota. Um, so I can't thank Rick enough. Hospitality, um, just his work ethic and the amount of time he puts in, uh, just is, we're really grateful to have him as a friend um, and have a, a good relationship with him. So thank you a lot, Rick. Next week on The Grind, Bill and Luke head to Kansas to hunt Carter's Big Island, a long-known honey hole for Kansas mallards. Bill can't wait to get in the pit and see just what this historic waterfowl area has to offer. <laughs>